marvel of Japanese engineering. Akai's flagship tape deck from 1973. We are looking at the legendary GXE65D. Not only this deck, but also the smaller brother, the GXE60, got some popularity in the audio community. These decks got the most over engineered auto reverse mechanism ever. The deck is equipped with Akai's own ADR system. And it also got the glass variety and crystal head, which is supposed to be indestructible. And it called Dolby B system. Dolby was one of the major differences between the GXC60 and the 65D. Further to the right, you can see the buttons to trigger the invert automatic, and there's also a transparent window on top as well to be able to observe the auto reverse mechanism at its work. Akai released this deck in 1973 and stopped selling them in 1975. So, recording this in 2020 means that this deck we are looking at is at least 45 years old. Looking at the deck today, there is nothing too special about it. It's just a normal stereo tape deck with wow and flutter at 0.12% and the frequency response only going up to 18 kHz. Whilst the specs are certainly not that impressive, the auto-reverse mechanism is very impressive. I already noticed by looking at the deck that the auto-reverse mechanism is not in its neutral position, so I thought to start this Let's remove the top cover and have a look at the mechanism and see what the deck actually does and doesn't do. The good news is, it does turn on. But it would not take a tape, so there is definitely something off with the mechanism. We have no other option than taking it apart and investigate what happened to the mechanism. Looking at the bottom I found a 50 and 60 kHz switch. It was set at 60 kHz, which is wrong in Australia. That of course wouldn't change a thing for the mechanism. This assembly takes long and is really painful. I will later learn that pretty much everything on this deck is really painful. Found some scrap metal. Somebody must have changed the power cord at one time. Not done yet. And finally, the last piece of the case comes off. Sometimes these mechanisms on tape decks are stuck in a weird position and it's difficult to get them unstuck because you don't know how they actually work. 
I thought it's a good idea to first have a look at the belts. Well, that doesn't look ideal. But let's continue with our inspection. So the other belts are not that bad, but I will replace them anyway. At least something is spinning. Just water and dirt in the deck so that it will get some cleaning. And definitely we also need to look into lubrication because I can hear that this shaft there that you see spinning is definitely creating some noise. The VU meters are moving randomly, that is not normal, especially the right one, a little bit the left one, so there also seems to be some electronic issues that we need to investigate further. But for now we want to concentrate on the auto reverse mechanism and the transport itself. This piece has to go down as soon as the tape is inserted and that is the main challenge. Why is it stuck there and how to get it loose? Trying my luck again without any case on it. But there's nothing moving and it also doesn't provide me really any additional clues. So let's concentrate on the bells and make this mechanism move and maybe that solves the issue. After removing some screws from the upper level of the deck, I'm able to split top and bottom a few millimeters apart and that's enough to remove the old capstan belt and insert a new one. With a new capstan belt installed, I reassemble everything. I also decided to remove this wheel where the capstan belt is running through, just to clean off the old grease and re-lubricate it. I was disappointed when I realized that I'm still not able to engage the auto reverse mechanism. It was still stuck in the same position despite having new belts installed. And while cleaning the deck, I got an idea how the mechanism works. Yes, and this little move actually solved my problem. So maybe now it's worthwhile to give the mechanism another try. With a bit of a kickstart I'm actually able to start playing the tape. I couldn't get the auto reverse mechanism to engage by pushing the buttons, but by twisting manually the wheel in the back of the deck, actually I'm able to engage it. What followed are adjustments to the mechanism. Some bits were actually bent a bit and of course getting rid of more old grease and lubricate everything. I also figured why the auto reverse buttons wouldn't work. When splitting top and bottom apart, I lifted these little fingers up and they were sitting behind these levers that they should trigger. That's fixed now. So let's do the final check.
Hi guys, there you have it. The most over-engineered auto-reverse mechanism probably ever made. If this made you curious about more auto-reverse mechanisms that are out of the norm, I would recommend to check out the Nakamichi RX505. So in the video it looked quite easy to get there where I am now. Um, and it's only 10 minutes um, that you see, but in reality it took me hours to get there where I am right now. I had to replace the belts twice because those that I picked initially were a bit too tight and uh, would kind of bog down the mechanism a bit. So I had to replace them a second time and found uh, better suitable belts and after that you saw the result and, and the auto reverse mechanism and the transport started to work. The problem at the moment is that there is nothing but silence coming out of the deck so we will need to go for full restoration of the whole thing. That means a complete recapping and, and checking every board that's inside the machine. This will be a, a bit of a painful process because the service manual is really not great and all the boards are just connected by wire. There are no connectors or anything uh, and there are plenty of um, metal covers that I had to remove to get to the circuit boards. However, it will be an interesting uh, restoration project, so there will be a second part. There will also be more footage about the auto-reverse mechanism itself, and there will be a thorough test of the GXC65D. So if you don't want to miss the second part of the um, restoration, don't forget to subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.